I am just still on the road on my way home early on a Saturday morning. And uh, last night I decided to do quite a strange thing. So I asked a local comedy night if I could have a slot on their club night, which is kind of, it advertised itself as, you know, famous faces from eight out of 10 cats and countdown. And it's very kind of what I would call left mainstream. So just like a regular comedy club with its regular comedians doing the regular circuit with kind of approved comedy. And approved comedy is comedy that is not in any way political unless it's leftist. It's not in any way... Uh, it doesn't make your teeth itch unless it's just overly vulgar or overly rude or anti-Tory or whatever. It's approved comedy in that it follows the approved narrative and then makes the odd edgy comment about, you know, Rishi Sunak. <laughs> anyway, that circuit. So the talky um, kind of stand-up night. And so I got myself a little slot on there. Now, they had me down as a special guest, which is perfect because I had no wish to be there as anyone but just Katie from Devon. And uh, I was given 10 minutes. So everybody else had, um, you know, the headline act, I guess, had 40, did he? Another guy had 30. Another guy had 15. And I had 10 because I'm the newbie and um, that's all good. And, and who knows? I mean, I could be dreadful. Uh, or booed off stage or whatever. So I super appreciate uh, Talkie Comedy Club allowing me to have 10 minutes. I thought that was really, I thought that was really, really brilliant actually on their behalf. And then of course, uh, it's a fully sold out event. So then of course you have um, a room full of people, full of people who aren't expecting you. They certainly didn't pay to come and see you, as in me. Uh, and I'm introduced as Katie. A couple of people had seen me already and were like, that's uh, that annoying bird. So I get up on stage. Now, bear in mind, from my perspective, that's kind of could be a whole room full of people who have been taught for decades to hate me or have at least learned to hate me or understand that to fit in, they have to hate me or to be accepted by their friendship group. They have to say, oh yeah, that silly cow, she's dreadful, oh, terrible. And I step up on stage in front of all of them. Um, now, the joy for me about that is all sorts of levels. One is that, um, you know, if I had been, if it was known that I was going to be there and my name was in any way on any of the publicity, then some people may have said they weren't going to come because they hate me. Um, and I wouldn't want to hurt someone else's ticket sales. That would be the last thing I would want to do. More likely what would happen, it would get picked up possibly by the local newspaper who have nothing better to do and don't know journalism if it smacked them in the face. And they would organise with some small group, stand up to racism or Black Lives Matter or Trans Rights Matters or... Anybody that I don't have any beef with, really, but just likes to get their placards out. Um, hope, not hate. You know, despite the fact that I personally think that what I do is very hopeful indeed. They'd somehow get some people outside or they'd try and get the venue to pull or they'd try and cause problems at the venue. And then the local newspaper would agree to meet them there to get a picture of them with their placards. And then once they've got their picture with the placards, they go home before the event even starts, because as long as they get their picture, they're happy and blah, blah, blah. And a whole world of nonsense that is completely unnecessary would have happened, which didn't because I was just special guest. Um, I got on well with all the other guys and usually other guys on the circuit are very, very hostile toward me. Um, A, because they're all nervous before they go on. B, because comedians aren't friendly to each other because they see an outsider as someone who might take a future slot from them. So there's just hostility. There's a lot of willy waving with male comedians um, because... Uh, it's all based on egos and who's the funniest and what running order is happening. I mean, there's a world that you don't need to know about, which is like any any business you work in. 
Uh, there's just a bunch of arseholery that goes on and, and stand up, I would say, is no different, if not worse. It's just there's fewer fat people from HR. But most importantly, I suppose, at my glorious age is it's good to uh, scare yourself, isn't it? It's good to test yourself. And I think possibly, you know, you'll know I've always said I never apologise. I never explain. And one of the things that, well, there's two things and they're the same. But at Katie's Arms that I do on a Friday night at eight o'clock, where I just have a glass of wine. I don't drink before I do it. I don't drink much wine when I'm doing it either. Actually, it's more of a prop. But um, I just speak my mind. And newcomers there will always say, oh, my God, she's drunk. Oh, my God, how many how many bottles has she got through already? And I actually haven't drunk a thing. But people are so conditioned to hear people speak with caution inside parameters to protect future bookings, to protect a booking on GB News or Sky News, to protect sponsorship deals, to protect their relationship with their manager or their publicist or their theatre bookings. People are so kind of sensitised that, that I sound drunk when I speak my mind without any apology. And the same thing happens. So I go into what is called the green room, but it's a bedroom. And always, this happened uh, on my last two dates, uh, two days ago, and last night, and everywhere I go, were you just being, so they meet me and they realise that I'm A, quite tiny, B, really ordinary, uh, C, happy to do anything, any jobs, I'll clear up, I'll tidy up, I'll knock on a door, I'll say thank you, I'll help the hotel and they look at me and they can't work out why I'm not what I'm supposed to be and their only way of explaining that away is to ask me oh so so you were just what you were just being a c-u-n-t or you just being controversial just that's just the persona right that's just like your act right that's just and it's funny because I have to just politely say, oh, no, no, I mean everything I've ever said. I stand by everything I've ever said and I don't apologise for anything I've ever said. It's just that an ordinary person like me, who's quite nice, can say those things. The media needed you to believe I was a monster so you could ignore me or disregard me or hate me or spit on me, or ban me from everything, or cancel me, or make it such that I can't have a job, uh, my children were under threat of being taken from me, I don't have a bank account, I'm banned from South Africa, I'm banned from Australia, um, I'm not, I can't turn up to do a comedy stint for 10 minutes, despite being able to sell out theatres of 1,200 people. And it's interesting because what I observe and what others will observe in their lives is that people need a reason to explain away why I'm not what they thought I was. But in truth, that sits with them. They were kind of duped into imagining me to be a monster. And for sure, some of the stuff I've said, some of the bluntness, some of the, you know, I, I've done that to myself. I own it. And I say to these guys, but let's be clear, I put myself out there. You can't edit if someone hasn't said the stuff. I said it all. I mean it all. So if you think I'm a monster of my own doing, that's absolutely fine. I own all of it. But when you try and explain me away as drunk, or you try and explain me away as, oh, oh, that was your character, was it? It actually sits on you. Because all along, I was only ever this. Just a regular bird, pretty tough one, uh, who reached, I guess, the top of quite a lot of the businesses that I was in and uh, who's determined and if that requires that for me to be able to have a voice again I'm now doing stand-up well watch me watch me go and if you were in the audience last night and uh, and I said to the audience hands up uh, you know as we got going once people got the first few laughs in and realized it was okay to laugh and I helped them by saying it is okay to laugh you can laugh at me it's okay to laugh. We were all laughing. And um, 
because obviously my material's marvellous. No, but there's always stuff we share. And so I said at some point, you know, hands up if you hate me or you think I'm a cow. And like loads of people put their hands up. But the great thing was that as we went through and just did some, you know, some kind of spiky stuff of mine, people were laughing along. And some people, some husbands were laughing along and you could see them because I suppose the wife thinks they're supposed to hate me and the husband's like, e -e 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 -e. and eventually everyone's laughing. And, and that was kind of the end point of the thing, which was, um, isn't it... Um, isn't it great? So people, we can all agree, everybody in that room, or I don't, I don't speak for everybody, but many people in that room could agree that life right now is utterly mad. And many people in that room that, that didn't know I was coming, that thought, Jesus Christ, what's that cow doing here? Could agree that the world isn't right right now. And that one of the medicines and therapies we can have is laughter. And so I just genuinely, genuinely, sorry, mouth not quite working, as you can see, it's early. I have to say this morning, right? I didn't have my glasses on. And I, I was like, oh, that's okay. I don't, I don't look too bad. I looked in the mirror just to see if I wouldn't scare the reception staff that I went to thank. And then I put my glasses on and I saw my actual face and I was like, Jesus. <laughs> Note to self, don't put glasses on when you're checking whether you're going to scare the staff. But I wanted to say genuinely, Thank you very much. If you were there last night at Talkie Comedy Club, thank you very much. Uh, to Ben and the organisers who allowed me to do 10 minutes, thank you very much. And if you were someone in the audience who started off the evening imagining me to be a monster and realised I'm just a pretty ordinary chick who can be a bit funny, uh, or still thinks I'm a bit of a cow. That's both those things are perfect. But I wanted to say thank you for giving me your time when you didn't know you were um, and for not leaving the room. <laughs> so uh, that's my update and uh, I'm really an opportunity for me to thank everybody and to acknowledge that. Oh, can you hear that? I'm on a farm right now. <laughs> That's a donkey in the background, if you wanted, if you can hear it. Um, yeah, just to thank everybody much, uh, everybody uh, so much for having, for being open minded enough to stay in your seats and listen to a woman that you may have thought or believed that you couldn't stand.